Okay, welcome to the chapter 14, Images and Licensing presentation lecture. Uh, please make sure that you have the chapter 14 note guide that goes along with the chapter's content so that you can get the notes for the chapter as we go through the slides and the material in chapter 14. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. First of all, when it comes to branding, as we've been talking about images and then also licensing, building that image. That is a very, very important part and a very, very important aspect of a marketer's job. The public image of a celebrity can make the difference between success and failure. And in today's class, we did get an opportunity to take a look at some of the failures when it came to celebrity endorsements. But uh, when it comes to a celebrity endorsement and building that image, an image is a mental picture or concept of something or someone. We build up images of ourselves on a daily basis. Marketers do the same thing for other products and services. Now, when a celebrity, when a celebrity or a company is in the public eye, there is an increase in the opportunity to make a profit from merchandising. Merchandising is why we market. We market so that we can merchandise and sell goods and services. Merchandising is the variety of promotional activities and materials that complement the support the advertising effort. So as we get into promotion a little bit more, we will start talking about elements of the promotional mix and the promotional mix advertising is going to be one of those components. All right, so we'll get into that in just a little bit, but let's continue on here with image. All right, including the image, there's also uh, things to consider in terms of endorsements. The Federal Trade Commission or the FETC defines an endorsement as one type of advertising done by a person who reflects his or her own opinions, beliefs, findings, and experiences that are separate from those associated with the product's company. So when those match up, we have the formula for a very good endorser and endorsement. When they do not, we have the formula for a very catastrophic endorsement, which could relate to a bad image of our organization to our consumers. So we want to stay away from that. We want to find an endorser that's going to match up with our company's beliefs, opinions, and findings in order for us to relate that endorser to the product, then essentially to the consumer. Now, when it comes to endorsements, there are definitely controversies. And these controversies can result in catastrophic results. Celebrities must use the products they endorse. If they do not use them, they are not endorsing them, therefore sending the wrong message to the consumer, which could then obviously reflect negatively on the image. The political opinions of celebrities may have an adverse effect on the endorsement, so now you might have viewpoints and opinions of topics and issues that are way outside the realm of the product that they are endorsing, but could also have an impact on that product that they are endorsing, thus reflecting negatively on the image. Now the personal controversies of a celebrity may have an adverse effect on the way the public views the endorsed product, but not always. To make a long story short, marketers don't want to roll the dice on this. Therefore, they try to get away from the personal controversies in order to have an endorser that is going to align well with the product or service that the marketer is selling. Companies do not want the image of their product damaged. The whole purpose of marketing is to build up and strengthen that image. You don't want it to take shots. You don't want to have instances outside of your control, in this case with an endorser, having certain opinions and viewpoints which are going to reflect negatively on that image. So that has to be protected at all costs. All steps are going to be taken in order to protect that brand's image. Now another way, sponsorships, which is something that you're going to get practice with in the virtual business simulation, is a sponsorship occurs when a company supports an event, activity, or an organization. In return for the money, the sponsor is provided with some type of advertising at the event or value. Think of the number of sponsors that are visible at a Timber Rattlers game. That whole home run wall is a wall full of sponsors. You see it in almost every sporting venue that there is. Miller Park, same thing. Lambeau Field, exactly the same thing. So a sponsorship is not only sponsoring an event, but looking for some type of value in return. Sponsorship is a crucial aspect in sports and entertainment. There is a sponsorship name for everything in NASCAR. NASCAR for a number of years used to be the Winston Cup, then it was the Nextel Cup, then it was the Sprint Cup, and now currently it is the Monster Energy Cup. So 
whoever the sponsor is is going to be able to put their name on it. Miller Park, sponsored by Miller. Enough money was given as a sponsorship to give them the naming rights. Those are just a couple of examples of sponsorships. The need for sponsorship. Sponsorships are additional revenue that is needed in order to... Okay, so and also when it comes to need for sponsorships, the money from concert ticket sales do not cover the cost of the tour. So if that's the case, how are we going to make these tours and these events profitable? We have to find additional revenue streams, and we can do so through sponsorships. Advertisers made to ask for advertising space on the stage, concession stands, sell t-shirts, even event programs. All of these are different aspects of sponsorship that could generate additional revenue in order to make an ent entertainment event profitable. Marketers keep track of how many times fans see the sponsor's name at an event and the sales of the products being advertised. So there's data being collected on all of this as well. There isn't anything that's being missed. This is actually quite a scientific process in tracking how sponsorships are sold, presented, and then the, the uh, benefits from those sponsorships in terms of sales and additional revenue. All right, so if you were thinking about sponsor, why might you sponsor? Well, companies seek a return on their sponsorship dollars. In order for them to get a return, that means that the amount of profit that is given back to the sponsor for the sponsor's initial investment or sponsorship. So a sponsor is not going to sponsor unless that sponsor can get some type of a return for the sponsorship. So it's not just a one-way deal. The sponsorship is two-way value, value to the event that's being sponsored and value to the sponsor who's sponsoring the event. Now, calculating return for sponsorships can be difficult, but should be seen as an increase in sales. If sales increase, regardless of what the expenses are, if sales increase, chances are the sponsorship was successful. Now, whenever there is sponsorships, just like endorsements, there's also risk. Companies want to be associated with a popular person who has a positive public image, exactly the same as a celebrity. So the sponsor has to be the same as well. We do not want sponsors with controversial viewpoints. We don't want sponsors that have different motives and business initiatives that don't necessarily jive with our event or our sport. Therefore, we want to try and find different sponsorship opportunities that match up or are similar. Now, federal laws dealing with tobacco and alcohol sponsorship have become stricter. Therefore, the tobacco industry and the alcohol industry have, are almost off limits when it comes to sponsoring certain events and certain venues. Not eliminated, but difficult. The federal government regulates the practice of wealthy companies that sponsor events that could be inappropriate for children and teens. So now there's also looking out for the welfare of the individuals being marketed to directly or indirectly. That's where the federal government comes in to help regulate those practices. All right, I apologize for the way that the slide is, is, uh, is formatted when it came over. It didn't quite format the way that I had hoped. All right, but let's take a look at this graphic organizer and let's talk about selling an image. Merchandising is selling. When it comes to merchandising, obviously there's two different channels in order to get the product or service to the consumer. We can use direct or we can use indirect. If we do this, normally when we're using either direct or indirect, we want to use things like tie-ins. We want to find ways to tie different products together to be able to tap into each of those products marketing base and market segments. Then within that, we try to find uh, endorsements. We try to find celebrities or sporting figures that are going to relate to our product, thus relate to the consumer. And sponsorships as well. So the sponsorship and the endorser are going to fit very, very similar in how they are going to play a role in merchandising of different sports and entertainment marketing or sports, sports and entertainment products and services. Now, licensing, which is what we began to talk a little bit about today, but licensing and royalties are major aspects of both sports and entertainment. Licensing plays just as important of a role as endorsements and sponsorships. Entertainment-related companies utilize merchandising and sell licensed products. Licensed products are not free products. Licensed products are products that were made by somebody else but could be used with the payment of a royalty or at least permission. So licensed products are goods or services that legally use logos or images owned by other companies or other people. In order to use them, permission must be granted, and in some cases, royalties must be paid. 
All right, so when it comes to licensing, all right, so licensing is required when the owner of an original image or product gives legal permission for a fee or sometimes not with a fee to another company or person to copy, manufacture, market, and or sell reproductions of the original item. That is having something licensed. That is a legal way of being able to copy somebody else's work. Now in the music industry, this is where we start to see a lot of royalties. Uh, licensing applies to obviously music, software, motion pictures, videos, DVDs, et cetera, et cetera. There are more than that. But when there is licensing in place, more often than not, because of this work being someone else's intellectual property, there is a royalty being paid for the copying or reuse of the material. For example, a songwriter and a publisher of a song may charge a licensing fee when an artist and label want to record that song. Not to mention, we have remakes of songs all the time, or we have new songs that are made with older music, and they're using some of those uh, melodies and harmonies and whatnot into new music, but that, that particular music is still licensed as somebody else's intellectual property. Therefore, some type of a license has to be in place and possibly royalties paid. Artists, writers, and publishers receive royalties or a percentage of record sales or fees for broadcast performances, as well as there can also be several agents between the artist and the record company that deduct money from the artist's profits. So there's a lot of entities here at play in order to make sure that all of this is on the up and up and all legal processes are being followed. Now, when it comes to entertainment and paying for entertainment, profits from entertainment products pay for the expense of producing the products with only a portion going to the artists themselves. So it might be a significantly lower percentage than we had originally thought that go to the artist, yet they are the life of the show, but there are a lot of expenses that go into putting on this performance. When music, movies, and software are illegally downloaded, which I'm sure we are all guilty of doing, and distributed from the internet or pri products are pirated, then many people are affected. However, the problem with any type of cybercrime in this nature is no face, no victim, no crime. And that is a common misperception of how people feel about downloading music illegally or pirating software illegally. The user of a pirated product can be prosecuted so it is illegal, therefore breaking the law, which means prosecution could take place. And then let's take a look at uh, when a performer or musician or anybody of that nature, I guess entertain in the entertainment industry makes it big. Performers can make additional income based on their public image. Again, going back to image and how important it is through endorsements and even sponsors. Companies can also earn income through merchandising, licensing, and royalties. All of these things that we talked about during this discussion in this chapter's material. And that concludes our chapter 14, Images and Licensing Presentation Lecture. Please make sure that you get all the notes for chapter 14. And if need be, revisit any of the slides so that you can get the notes and then submit them into classroom when you have got it completed. And I will see you next time we meet in class.